Hello everyone, my name is Luke and in today's video I am going to show you how to populate meshes along a spline. Most videos on that topic simply include a single static mesh component, but in my video I am going to actually use a set of different meshes and populate them along the spline. So as you can see on the spline here I have three different variations of the wooden fence. So let's get right into it. First, let's take a look at the global variables of the blueprint. Here we can see all of the variables. So the first variable is the mesh set, which is basically an array of a few different meshes. In my case I have only three meshes, but I can also add some more. So for example, let's add another fence. And now you can see that the new variation has appeared on our spline. The next variable is the offset variable, which basically tells the distance between each of the mesh instances. And the last variable is a boolean that says flip rotation. As you can see, the fence mesh is asymmetrical, so basically I want to control the rotation of the planks. And now, let's get into the blueprint. The first part of the blueprint is simply checking the flip rotation global variable, and if it's active then we set our rotation offsets here, and if it isn't, then we don't. The next part is probably the most important part of the blueprint. First, we have to loop over our mesh set array. Then, for each mesh included in that array, we create a separate instance static mesh component. For each of those components, we set their static mesh to the one from the array, and then we add the components to another array. This is the local variable, since we won't be using it anywhere else outside the construction script. Then, once that loop is complete, we proceed to the next loop. First, we calculate the number of meshes which will be used in our spline. We do so by dividing the spline length by the offset value. Once we know how many meshes will be included in the spline, we can actually add them. In order to do that, we select a random instance static mesh component from our array. This basically allows us to select a random mesh from our variable. And in order to create the instance transform, we basically get the spline, and then use the get location at the distance along spline, and get rotation at the distance along spline nodes. As you can see, I have some calculations for the rotation here, but if you're not going to use the flip rotation variable, then you won't need it. Now all you have to do is place the actor somewhere in your world, and as you can see you can easily add new spline points, or move them around, and that's pretty much it. But before we end the video, let me just address a few problems and issues that may arise from this solution. So you should be aware that there are now multiple instant static mesh components in our blueprint. So it's pretty obvious that this solution will be worse performance-wise than having only a single component. But unfortunately this is how it must be. And another limitation of this solution, a much bigger one at that, is the offset itself. Basically this means that all our meshes that we include in our set have to be roughly the same size. You could probably overcome this limitation if you mess around with the logic a bit, but it's good enough for most purposes. And that's all for today. See ya.